Well, hi there, friends. Welcome back to Heartfield Kitchen. I'm so glad that you stopped by today because I'm going to have another super simple recipe for you today. This recipe is going to be for green chili chicken enchiladas, and it's so simple that you're only going to need six common ingredients, and you can have this dish on your family's table in 30 minutes. Well, welcome back friends. Thank you again for stopping by today. If this is your first time stopping by Heartfield Kitchen, you can find plenty of food, kitchen, and pantry motivation through recipe videos, day in the lives, grocery hauls, and so much more. If any of that sounds good to you, I sure hope that you'll hit that big red subscribe button and make yours a Heartfield Kitchen too. Well, to start this recipe off, of course, I'm gonna need some chicken. And all of my chicken is frozen right now, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you how I cook my chicken in the Instapot when it's fully frozen. So let's go ahead and jump into that. I am going to put my trivet inside, place the frozen chicken breast inside, and then I'm gonna pour one and a half cups of water on top. So a little bit of salt and pepper. Place your lid on. Make sure it is on sealed, not venting. We're going to pressure cook for 15 minutes. So once the 15 minutes are up and my timer ends, I'm going to allow this to natural release for 10 minutes. All that means is I'm going to leave it alone and not touch it for 10 extra minutes. Once I've reached that point, I'll be right back to show you what I do next. Okay, so now that we have let this natural release for 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and release the pressure. And as you can see, it's not very much. Okay, now we're just going to open the top and check it out. Okay, I want to test this with a thermometer. So what I'm going to do is just put this in diagonally in the thick part of the meat. And we need to reach above 165 degrees. As you can see, we're right perfectly in line with 165. What I'm going to do next is just place the chicken in a bowl. Okay, now the easiest way to shred your chicken is by using a hand mixer or a stand mixer. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. perfectly shredded chicken. It's not over dry. It's not overcooked. It's just right. So now for our recipe, I am going to use one pound of this shredded chicken and usually these chicken breasts average about a pound a piece. So I'm going to remove some of the shredded chicken to save for another recipe. So in under 30 minutes, I now have enough shredded chicken for two separate recipes. I'll take this and pop it in the freezer, and once it's frozen, I'll remove it from this plastic bag and vacuum seal it. Or if I decide to make chicken salad or some other recipe using chicken this week, I'm one step ahead. Okay, so now that we have our chicken ready, let's go ahead and go over the ingredients list. And I'm going to show you that you're going to need one can of enchilada sauce. After making this recipe, I'm going to recommend several times throughout this video that you actually use two of the 10 ounce cans of the enchilada sauce. Otherwise, I feel like it's just a little too dry to be considered good enchiladas. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into that ingredient list followed by the instructions and then I'll check back in with you here at the end of the video. Okay, so now that we have all of our ingredients prepared, I'm going to go over them one by one. Of course, we have our two cups or one pound of shredded cooked chicken. 
Next, you'll need one 10 ounce can of green chili enchilada sauce. Your third ingredient is four ounces of diced green chilies. The fourth ingredient is one cup of sour cream. And your final ingredient is two cups of shredded Colby Jack cheese. The first step is to bring your enchilada sauce to a boil. Okay, while our enchilada sauce is coming to a boil, we're gonna move on to the next step. In a small bowl, combine your chicken, one cup of the cheese, and the diced green chilies. Once it's well combined, go ahead and set that bowl aside. I'm sorry I failed to mention, you will need six to eight corn tortillas. Okay, now you can carefully dip your corn tortillas into the enchilada sauce to soften. Go ahead and lay that in your casserole dish. And we're going to spoon on some of your sour cream. Now your chicken filling. I'm adding about a tablespoon of sour cream and I'm gonna say about a quarter cup of filling to each tortilla. Now we're gonna roll the tortilla seam side down and move on to the next one. Now be sure to leave your tortillas in the enchilada sauce long enough to soften them. If it doesn't get soft, then when you roll it up, it's gonna crack. It only takes just about 10 or 15 seconds, should be fine. Okay, I am gonna to try to squeeze one more in there. Okay, I just did a small dish and I have about a half a cup, maybe three quarter cups of filling left. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is enough to do eight corn tortillas. I just chose to use a smaller dish today so I could only fit seven in. Now we're just gonna pour the remaining enchilada sauce on top. Spread that around evenly. Place the remaining cheese on top. And we're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes. to add a little parsley to the top of almost every casserole that I make because it just brightens it up and makes it more appealing. Now with these enchiladas, I just made some simple sides of some Uncle Ben's ready rice. This is just your whole grain plain brown rice. I chopped up some cilantro and added about a half a cup of the Colby Jack cheese. Gave it a good stir and there's a simple side. I also have some pico that I made the other day. It's just jalapenos, onion, diced tomatoes, and cilantro with a little bit of lime juice. And then there you have it, a super simple meal. Well, there you have it, another super simple recipe that you can have on your family's table in 30 minutes. Well, if you enjoyed today's video, I hope that you'll give it a big thumbs up. And if you think you'll give it a try, you can let me know down below in the comments. Well, as always, I like to just take a few seconds to say thank you for choosing to spend some of your time with me today. And until next time, be sure to put your whole heart into everything you do, and you'll have a heart-filled kitchen too. Hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye.